You want to click? Yeah, I can click for you. Oh wait, oh wait, Tavis has the clicker. Okay. So this is my talk, Integrating Organic Systems by Building a Hippie Bridge. Networking Consciously Proactive Sustainable Communities. What the hell does that mean? Well, let me explain. What is a hippie bridge? <laughs> What does it say on there? Click to mass section. That, I didn't put that there. Everyone made this in Microsoft PowerPoint. That's possible. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah, LibreOffice Impress is completely compatible with PowerPoint. Okay, cool. And again, well, it's just supposed to be a bridge. And uh, that's a hippie bridge. <laughs> that's a hippie. I like acronyms for all of you that know me. What is a hippie? A helpful. Helpful person. So if you need a hand, a hippie's the person you're going to call. Intentional. Notice I put tent in there. There's a reason for that. We like to tent. Peaceful. This is you. It's your core being who you really are. The truth. Presence. Staying in the moment. And it's you. We all have this. This is a part of who you are, not who I am. I'm a creation of this community from what you've done and for how you've accepted me and let me keep doing this. It's incredible. Um, we're all hippies. When we traverse the 18-inch superhighway from our heart to our head, it is a heart-based consciousness. That's where we're moving. We're getting away from all of these things that terrify us. And we're coming back to the place where we realize what we really are at our core. We're love. You know when you're with your friends and your family and you get hugs and you're working together and you're doing stuff? It's the truth. It's, it, it just feels right. Our hippie self is the one who lives consciously in the present moment. The time is always now. Josh said tonight he wasn't ready to speak. That's exactly it. Nobody's ever ready. I didn't... I was never ready to do this either. I went in to a... Evolver Spore last summer at the area, the Love Spore, and I watched James Gesso get up and talk, and he inspired the hell out of me, and I got up and I started talking. And I didn't know these guys, I knew them a little bit prior, I met Matt at the Center for Spiritual Living, and they took me in. These young, beautiful, intelligent, fabulous people. I'm 42 years old, and the majority of them are in their 20s. And we just bonded. It was like a homecoming for me. And they've taken me to a place where I never thought I would ever go. I'm going to cry as you tell us. So <laughs> um, <coughs> the universal mind of intelligence integrating its systems into a permaculture community. We're, we need to permaculture our society to bring people back together to community. Um, from what I learned at the park, I talked to so many people, and we have three common problems in our society. We have no time, no energy, and no money. And the system that we currently live in, save yourself time, energy, and money, is not working. It's not working for anyone. We need to permaculture our society. People en energetically remembering mutual awareness. When we work together, we live in a collective home that you've heard a few times this evening. We had 20 people last weekend permaculturing, well, not exactly permaculturing, but the, the preliminary <laughs> to that, uh, our lawn in the back. And it was incredible to see all of these people come together. We had kids, we had old people, we had people that were out of shape, we had people that had no idea what they were doing, but they just wanted to help. They just want to contribute. And I see that everywhere I go. There's people saying, how can I help? How can I get involved? I want to be part of this. Because we all feel it in us. We know that it's time for change. We're moving away from the consciousness that we previously lived in. The survivor mentality. Outwit, outplay, outlast. Two, the evolver mentality. Embrace, engage and empower. 
Every single one of you has a gift. It's you. You brought it here to give it to the world. You're all leaders. That's why you keep coming to these things and having these conversations. And I've never been so impressed by a group in my life. I love you guys from the bottom of my heart and I've seen so much growth in every one of you. It's, it lights me up every day. I get on your cases sometimes and I know that. But it's because I love you. And I want to challenge you. I want to challenge you to be a better person. Because you are. We all are. But we've been indoctrinated with these ideas that say we're not good enough. We're not smart enough. We're not strong enough. We're not attractive enough. That's fucking bullshit. You all are. You're fabulous. These, these are the people that you're looking for. Volver, Matt Catley, James Jesso, Kim Chi. I could go on for hours. These people are amazing. Meet your sport organizers. Say hello to them. They are changing the world. Support them. They are few people that are working very hard. They put on events like this three, four times a week, work jobs, go to school, plus run an incredible business at their home, and they take people in. It, it, it's, it's a beautiful thing. I was there this morning. Ah, <laughs> uh, they had their first, <laughs> first couch surfer. Uh, Ellie, uh, I'm not sure if she came, that's not exactly how you say Hey! Like, I just, it's such, every person that I bring to that home leaves going, wow. <laughs> I just had the most incredible time. I walked in there, I felt at home, I felt at peace. If you haven't gone to the Evolver House, go there. They have potlucks. They have conversations, they have spores, they have dance parties. They are the people that are changing the world. And they need your help. And they want your help. And they'd love for you to be there. Um, these guys grew me, not the other way around. The Zeitgeist Kids. This is another group that I was involved in before I got in with Occupy. These guys, Raz, Phil, Ronnie, they're change in the world. Get to know these guys. Say hello. The point of these things is to make as many friends as you can make because when you have friends you can have anything. I don't have a job. I haven't had one for six months and all of these beautiful people keep putting up with my bullshit and taking care of my ass because I'm crazy. How cool is that? You're all crazy. You and me here. Thank you. And these people, the crazies. And I mean that. In the bottom of my heart, Occupy, uh, I have an acronym for that too, I'm sure a lot of you have heard. Our Collective Consciousness Uniting People. Why not? I see so many people from so many different walks of life and they're all there, and they've all got different grievances. Nobody <laughs> can, is on the same page, but we like to hang out together. <laughs> and it seems to, it, eventually somebody comes up with an idea that enough of us will do. And it's, it's kind of a pull and a tug, but that's this, this part of this revolution that's so special, is we're learning patience, patience for each other. Because we're all brilliant. We're all here to share our gifts. But we need to take time for ourselves in order to get to that place. Ah, the Ramsey House. Please! Please! Come visit our home. Uh, it's a loving, fabulous place. And as you've heard this evening, we have 12 rooms and 14 occupants, soon to, soon to be 13, uh, as I'm departing on Saturday. And I'm going to miss you guys a lot. Yeah. <laughs>
Um, <laughs> it's. <laughs> We've had this place is better than any university that I've been to, any conference, any speaker. Like shit happens there right now, <laughs> and we deal with it. And as long as we keep the conversation going, it keeps growing. We're evolving. It's, it, it's kind of like I said to Matt, they said, you guys named your home the Evolver Home, and look at it, all the people in it in the home, they just magically started evolving. They have all these amazing aquaponics, and their garden, and the depth, and the depth chamber, and the, uh, the sound bed, like it's just, it's such a magic place. We have a beautiful garden, and we have potlucks on Thursdays and Sundays, we want people to come down and hang out and have conversation. Whatever it is that you want to talk about, there's always people in our house. When there's 14 people in a house, it's pretty hard to find it empty ever, okay? And uh, it's, it's a good place to be. We, we're growing, we're working. Introduce yourself. Say hi to the people that live there. Help out. We have a lot to clean up. Uh, it's <laughs> unbelievable. Uh, it's gonna get it's <laughs> it, it is when you have that many people trafficking through your home all the time it's insane and so please if you guys are out please just pitch in this is a community thing and that's how it is when we all con contribute everything just works um, we are growing organic leaders working symbiotically with mother nature what is an organic leader Somebody that's not scared to stick out in the crowd and only communicates with unconditional love. Mm. Ooh, thought that was funny. <laughs> um, what do we need? We need people to step up and really make conscious contributions. This is this is the time. This is 2012. This is the peace movement. This has been around for a long time. It's just coming back, and it's time, because we all understand that this system that we're living in now is just creating misery everywhere. And it's when we come to these things that we get excited, and we get turned on, and we get back into our lives. Um, my inspiration for what I've done, uh, my, my niece, Olivia Marie Talbot, was murdered November 23rd, 2005 in Edmonton. She was 19 years old and six months pregnant. Um, Olivia was under my care uh, and with my ex-wife for a year. Um, she was a troubled child, and she went through a lot of things that got her to the place uh, where she is now. I, uh, on that day, I was uh, a cokehead, alcoholic, bankrupt, divorced, pretty close to jobless, almost homeless at that point. I did rock bottom. Everything in my life was uh, as bad as it could be. And then I lost my niece. And at that point, I said to myself, I can't do this anymore. I don't want to do this anymore. I don't want to. This is my second niece. Brooke, my niece, Brooke Ivy Clapson, was murdered 2000, September 19. I said, I can't go to any more of these funerals. I'm, I don't want to see people angry. I need to do something to make a difference. And so, at this point, that's the guy. I've lived in many bodies. I've been a lot of different people. That was the one at that point, at that time of my life. I was uh, 30, 36 years old and just coming off a cocaine addiction. I'm six plus years clean and sober now. Thank you. I, I wish I had something to do with it, but it, it's, <laughs> I, I, have a guard, I have a guardian angel, and she won't. She's she's a pain in the ass. <laughs> um, I started as a happy baby because I want to. I want you guys to understand that change is possible, and it does happen in people. And all you have to do is stick with it. You don't always know where you're gonna go. From a baby boy. Doing anything, man. There you there go. go. Hmm. To a toddler. 
I used to walk to school every day, and I'd go, Shazam! And I thought I was going to fly. And I do this about every 10 feet. People <laughs> thought I was a little odd. That hasn't changed a lot. <laughs> I uh, am about to embark on a trip across Canada. I guess that'll probably come up here sometime. Uh, and I'm going to start doing that Shazam thing again. Because it's going to happen. <laughs> so if I get like tired, I'll fly by and say, <laughs> then I went to graduation. Again, this is, these are all the same person, okay? We live, as you get older, you live in a lot of different bodies and you experience a lot of different times. This is my uh, first attempt at being a hippie, but I was uh, more of a rock star at that point and really had no idea how to coordinate anything. And that's my mom. Me and my mom again, this is after my sobriety, when I was at my parents' place, and when I was starting to change my life. Then I, uh, on October 15th, 2011, I, I did something that changed my world forever. I went to uh, Occupy Calgary. I lived, in, I lived in Calgary for 37 years of my life, all my adult life. <laughs> and two months prior to the occupation, I moved back to Red Deer to my parents' place. Um, to do a renovation with my father. We finished it. I had a, an apartment built and I was going to live there, finish my book that I've been writing for six years and live happily ever after with my parents and help them through their later years. It was my intention. Um, a week before the occupation, I texted James and I said, James, you want to go to New York? And he says, when? He texts me back, why not Calgary? I'm like, What's going on in Calgary? <laughs> it's like the occupation. Like, what? <laughs> and he's like, yeah, there's this meeting on Friday night. I said, okay, I'll see you there. And I haven't left. I'm still here. It was the first day that I've ever felt. I didn't even know what I had to do, but I just knew that there was something in me that wanted to come out. I kept getting closer and closer to the megaphone, and then I couldn't leave it alone. <laughs> <laughs> and half the time I had no idea what I was saying, I was just yelling! And I thought, well that's going to get somebody's attention. And people got excited and I was like, what did I say? <laughs> Anybody hear it? And then the people come up and say, that was awesome! I'm like, yeah! <laughs> But that's it. You get to this place and it's just, I, I'm not in control. I, right now, this is not me. And this is what I've turned into in six months. The Hippie Bridge. Um, I have taken uh, how I look at it. My generation is very busy with kids and work and all of these other things. And I've met all of these beautiful young people and, and people my age and up that are interested in changing the world. I believe through conversation that our generation is here to inspire you guys because you guys all have great ideas like every single one of you has told me something brilliant and I know that it's gonna work I have complete faith in the system because it's in you guys not because it lives out there or it has mon monetary values attached to it uh, so my transformation from a regular everyday citizen, I used to. Uh, okay, this is this is how pathetic my job life was. My very first job at 14 years old was at Primo's restaurant uh, in Willow Park. It was a block from my parents' house. I got 3.35 an hour. My final job at 41 years old, the last one I had, was at Wellington's. 27 years later, I was a waiter from Busboy and I was making $8.85 an hour. A $5.50 hike, woo, <laughs> over 27 years. And you lived with your parents. <laughs> <laughs> I moved back with my parents after that. Actually, I, I never had money issues per se, not at that time, but I just knew that I didn't, I didn't want to live like this anymore. I was, I was studying to be a minister at the Center for Spiritual Living, and I thought that that was how I was going to change the world, and then this happened and and it's just it's taken me over I, I i wish that i could explain it oh sorry the what i what i figured out is that when at the occupation i became an idea 
because I didn't have a job and I wasn't really overly useful, I guess, at that point. That's how I felt. And I was an idea that lived in everybody's head that we could live as an egalitarian society, that it was possible. Because otherwise, you would have kicked me out a long time ago. I'd drive you all nuts. I get that. And it's, it's just been so fabulous. But then I, I kept asking people, what is this idea? What is this idea? And I get so many different responses. And I was like, well, it's not, it's not really an idea anymore. It's a feeling. It's just, it's a feeling. It's a feeling that I get from you guys that I reciprocate back as a mirror. You come at me with big smiles and open arms all day long. It's, it's my job. I go around all day and I tell all of these amazing people how wonderful they are. And I watch them smile and I watch them get excited and I watch them tear up. And it's the truth. I'm just telling you what you need, what you're asking me to hear because we all have the potential to do anything and everything. We live in a limitless universe. If you, mind can conceive it, man can achieve it. Or woman, as you can see. And look at the ladies tonight. This is so, give yourselves a round of applause, ladies. Like, <laughs> I love it. This, this is the rising of the kind of family. It's a good thing my video didn't work because this I'd be up here forever. Um, you Can Heal Your Life, Louise Hay, I have the book with me. This is my first book in personal development. I've bought it and given it away 20 times. I could do an entire lecture on it, but I'm not going to. Please, get yourself a copy of this book. This lady beat cancer. She did 25 years of study on affirmations, and she has changed the world in so many people's lives. Like, it's, it's incredible. I met her last year at 84 years old, and she looks like she's 60. And she's the most loving, caring, wonderful person I've ever been around. Her and Wayne Dyer. Okay, so these are some tools. And this is a lot of the things that people have discussed today. How do we get conscious? How do I change my life? What can I do differently? Nutrition. Some form of vegetarianism or conscious eating. Water. Drink lots of water and carry a water bottle. Like, it, it's so, it, it makes such a difference in your life and in your consumerism. Carry a backpack. Always have a book with you and some healthy snacks. You never know where you're going to have a little time. Exercise. Some form of cardio. I'm a big fan of yoga. I highly recommend it. Bike or walk. Use your body. Try to stay out of your vehicles as much as possible. It's not necessary for a lot of short trips. And the weather's getting nice. Meditate. 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 Um, I, I suggest meditation. <laughs> I think it is the most important time of your day because it is your self-love, it's your reflection, and it is your time to just be and not worry about all the other things that are going on in your lives. Study. Read inspired literature every day. 30 minutes. Just and There's so many beautiful things out there. Reading is what's transformed my life. I didn't read a book till I was 36 and now I think I've read six this month. Like I just, I, I can't stop. I'm addicted to knowledge. I've transformed my cocaine to a knowledge addiction and a meditation addiction. Way healthier. Um, Facebook, events. Go to these events like this. Meet people, network. Really get to know each other. You guys are all amazing. And there's not one person in this room here tonight that doesn't have so much to offer. So give each other the time and the patience to say hi, to step out of your comfort zone, step outside of that box, and, and really integrate. Have fun, take every day, every time, every day, to fun and laugh, just enjoy yourself. Life is 42 years old, okay? I didn't know it was gonna go this fast, I had no idea. But if you wanna stay young, as Buckminster Fuller said, Hang out with young people. Mm. Mm. It works. You just get really hairy. Um, <laughs> number 10, community. Consciously be growing your network, always. The people like, um, the like-minded people, you're gonna see them everywhere. They're generally the ones that are smiling. Mm. That's always a good sign. If somebody's smiling, they want you to approach them. Try that, just say, hey, how you doing? They're like, what? Well, what are you smiling at me for? <laughs> It'll start a conversation. Ask people questions. That is 
the, the best way to meet somebody is ask them about themselves. We all love talking about ourselves. And I've had conversations for half an hour where I've said, hello, your name is, and then listened, and I had somebody say to me, man, you're a good conversationalist. I didn't say a word. <laughs> but that's okay, right? They needed to get it out. And, and you learn, because the universe is always teaching. It never turns off. Love yourself. You cannot love anybody until you love yourself, which is, yes, thank you. And number, and that is affirmations, and that's in Louise Hay's book. I highly recommend you guys do affirmations. The hardest exercise I ever did was look in the mirror when I was getting sober and say, Brent Talbot, I love you. I started bawling. I'm like, what the? There's nobody here. I live in my, by myself, and I, it's freaking me out. It's hard to do, but I highly recommend it. it, it we have such a low self-image as a society that it's something that it will really help you move forward in your conversations. I highly recommend vision boards if you have them. Um, it's just a cork board with all kinds of pictures of things that you would like to manifest, things that you would like to see in your life. Put them somewhere where you can see them. Look at them a lot. We learn through pictures and stories, so if you record that. Uh, Mind Movies, which I was going to show you, but uh, we don't have Wi-Fi, so you, you got saved. But if anybody wants to watch it, it'll be on the video. Uh, I created this two and a half years ago, and it has transformed my life. It's all um, affirmations, which is I am something, and then followed by pictures. Uh, I, I highly recommend you check them out. They, it's wine, mindmovies.com was the one that I did it on. I think there's probably free ones now, and I've heard that Apple Computer has some sort of function that you could just do it anyways. Um, our mission. So what are we doing? What did all this happen? What does this mean? Mark and I, right there, Mr. Gilmore. Uh, May 1st. We are walking from Victoria to Ottawa. Um, why? To network conscious communities across Canada. I know there are so many communities like this one. They're all out there. And our mission is to talk to all of them, to integrate, to get us all sharing ideas. Because with idea sharing, it's unbelievable how quick we, quickly we learn. It's incremental. To raise awareness of the constant growing inequality in every system, and it's all over the planet. To send love, hope, and inspiration to budding communities. There are a lot of communities that don't have the support that we have and have as many people coming out. They need our support too. We need to integrate and bring them in here, these smaller communities, because wow, what a bunch of fabulous people they get to hang out with. To get people away from the television sets and dialoguing about conscious ways to symbolically work with Mother Nature. Get them into their yards, start them gardening, get them out of the TV room. To extend knowledge, collaboration, and communication with skills with sisters and brothers all across the country. What can I do? Get involved. Grow into the leaders you are all. Keep growing in this community. Come down, say hi. We do, I have demands um, for this march. I, I'm, uh, I don't really think with limitations. I, I think that uh, the bigger the, the idea, the, the more people that will rally around it. Um, my intention for this walk and the demands that I carry is food, water, shelter, clothing for everyone on this planet. At this point, I believe that Canada has the ability to demand that and to, to be the first nation to say, we're not going to rest until that happens. Because we need to have everybody starting from the same page. It doesn't happen. There's children dying every five seconds in Africa. Every five seconds. That's human suffering. We have enough food to feed everybody. If people start being more conscious about what they're doing. We can do this, but we all have to get into it. See. As a hunter and gathering society, as a, somebody that doesn't work, I, uh, I no longer have to hunt. It's been taken out of my vocabulary. It's been supplied by my friends who give me food, water, shelter, clothing, and a lot of love. 
naturally now as uh, what they've created is something that just gathers. I try and get as many people as I can everywhere I go to come and do things like this. And it, it, it is what we do as a species. I, I could just sit around and do nothing. They, they, my roommates afford me that. They don't give me a schedule. They don't say you have to do this, you have to do that. They trust me. And I try to contribute as a result. If you trust people, they will try and work with you. If you fear them, you're gonna have issues. And keep gathering. Think about, this is my favorite part, sorry. Entomology is so much, I've had so much fun since I started learning it. It's all in the words, people. Politics, many blood-sucking leeches. Hmm, government, mind control, conscience, without science. The evolutionary dictionary, which is something that uh, I came up with down, well, came to me down at the park. People were calling us insane, and I agree. When you go in, you are sane. Intuition, the student within. Ingenious, the genius within. It all came with the package. Invent, till we speak it, it's still in there. Everything you needed to know came with the package. You got the full meal deal. It's all there. Um, my acronyms, the things, this is how I've transformed my life is by changing my vocabulary. I was using a debilitated dictionary and now I started changing words to how I feel about them and how they reflect to me. Um, love, living on vibrational energy, I believe that that's the core of my being and that's what keeps me going every day. I'm just, I just get excited all the time. Um, team, together everyone achieves miracles. I see that every day. Uh, I, it's, it's the truth. Fear, which is a big one. These are false experiences appearing real. They don't actually happen in your life. They're just things that happen in your mind. The evolution of fear is feeling excited and ready. Peace, people energetically attracting common empathy. And these were lined up. And my last and favorite is faith, finding answers in the heart which I encourage all of you to do. And I should be getting close to the end. I didn't think it was going to take this long. Sorry, guys. Um, so we're going on a journey across Canada. Uh, May 1st, we start walking from Victoria to Ottawa with the Occupy Movement, with our communal support, friends and family, Hanging out, hanging on, remembering the ultimate message that we're all in this together. And uh, interestingly enough, as I wanted to speak about leaders and how you guys have all impressed me with my life, um, I was going on this trip alone, and uh, Mark Gilmore has stepped up and said that he'd come with me. And I'm like, you're crazy, let's do it. <laughs> And he's, uh, he's got a bit of a phobia about public speaking, and he said to me, hey, can I come up and talk? I said, fuck yeah. <laughs> Get up here, Marky. <laughs> Number one fear, public speaking. Number two, death. Sorry, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> I chase death. <laughs> uh, yeah, this isn't that hard. I love you, Mark! <laughs> uh, I'm not very gesticular. I don't know what to do with my hands. Uh, <laughs> okay. uh, I'm just going to keep this really quick. Uh, okay, here's a little poem. Coming apocalypse. Calculated consequence. Conscript consciousness. I decided to stop idling when I realized utopian society resides inside of me. Thank you, Mark. That was awesome. And we are at the end, guys. The truth. All we need is love. That's Mark's work. That's over by our house. 
I highly recommend you come over and check it out. We've got it, some excellent work by some amazing artists all over the place. The keys to integrating the system. Keep smiling, keep peace, keep loving. Believe in yourself, be you. Nobody else can be you, you're a snowflake. We're all individual, we're all unique, accept yourself. Why will we be successful? When there is no enemy within, the enemies outside cannot hurt you. We go of clear mind, clear consciousness, with loving hearts. This is our going away party, Mark and I. Um, this is Friday, Inglewood Community Hall, Rhythm Cafe. It's $20, which is really weird, because I don't usually go anywhere that costs money. <laughs> but I, I, I really was excited about doing the drama circle. I thought it'd be kind of ceremonial to send us off like that. I love you guys to come, but if you don't have money and you still want to party with us, come to the house. Um, we're going to have simultaneous parties going on until we get back. And uh, I believe we're at the end. I, Kayla asked uh, if we could have something today, and I think it's time. Yes! <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.